Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to briefly take apart the DSV. Uh, someone requested that I show them how I service it. Uh, it's very simple. I'm going to take this thing apart very, very quickly. I'm also going to take apart or at least remove the, the valve stem for the ADV. So you can see what that looks like. And I'll show you uh, my old one. Hopefully you can see uh, what was causing my issues. Otherwise, I'll take some good photos of it and post that uh, in the video. Uh, but as you'll see, it's not much to it. They're very easy to take apart uh, with very minimal tools. For the DSV, you need a three millimeter Allen. Uh, I have this snap-on screwdriver style that's long enough to get in there. I just get in get on the screw and, un and turn counterclockwise. The This is gonna spin on you, just hold it. There's not a whole lot of torque holding that down. Uh, there shouldn't be. Uh, again, this is all plastic. You don't want to over torque anything. So keep in mind that it should come apart pretty easily. So get that out of there. And you'll notice a little O-ring right there that o-ring uh, should be checked make sure that it's still in good condition that it's not fraying or cut or uh, overly compressed you can see hopefully the threads in there everything is um, uh, again plastic there's no metal inserts or anything like that so be careful when you go to put that back together so this thing the th the threads are uh, kind of biting into the inner DSV drum so that has to be turned all the way out I don't just push it out so that pops out easy enough the inner sleeve then just pushes straight out and you end up with this so you have the outer sleeve and the inner sleeve and on this you've got a couple o-rings one that seals around the mouthpiece and one that seals the uh, outsides of this inner drum uh, to the outer drum. And these were the grooves I was telling you about. You can kind of see all of that. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments that a friend of theirs uh, started getting some leaks. I have not had that problem. Um, again, they're, they're very minor, but they are obviously very noticeable. Um, I just, I've been keeping an eye on it and I take it apart and service it regularly. As you can see, there's plenty of lube on there to help it glide. Uh, what I think ends up happening though, is you get debris and stuff in this channel here that you use to vent the water out. And then when you rotate it, it just brings some of that debris with it into the inner drum or I should say between the inner drum and the outer drum. So there's not much to it. This thing, you know, I'd use uh, a pick set or a, um, preferably a plastic pick so you don't end up damaging anything. But these are kind of fat, so I usually end up using these because they're really thin and just be careful not to scratch anything. Uh, or uh, mar anything up, clean it all up, re-lube it, and then put it back together. The easiest way to get this back in and lined up, because um, some people may not have the hand strength to do it, uh, is to use uh, a screwdriver or something with the same, the same size as this inner piece here. I usually use a um, like a handle to a screwdriver or something that'll push it in. It won't damage anything. Uh, or I use a flashlight. Sometimes in the field, I have a flashlight that fits the inner uh, groove here, the land there, and uh, I use that to push it in. Um, most of the time, I can just get it in by hand though. And the way that goes in the orientation for that is you see the vent hole there. That has to line up with this groove and then obviously that hole has to line up with this um, hole here so that you can 
turn it. So then obviously this would have to go like that so that that groove lines up with this and this lines up with that. If you put it in this way, it's going to cause you issues. You won't be able to vent it for one. Um, and then when you close it all the way, uh, it will uh, actually, you'll be able to see this this vent up at the top here, and it's just gonna um, cause problems and not allow you to vent the water out of it. So in any case, push it in. Uh, I like to just get this kind of towards the top, slide it in, and then push it all the way in until that circle lines up in there. Uh, once you got that going, and the reason you want that there is so that you can line the bolt in, the bolt in right here. And this is just kind of by, by touch and feel. I can see it in there, but um, you kind of have to work it, work it up and get it standing up in there. Once you do that, Probably easiest just to go like this and get nope that didn't work this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing it's getting that to stand up in there while you get the screwdriver in all right all right, got it in there, get it started. So you can see just one or half a thread in there. And this, I would normally take it apart for the sake of this video. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. I'll take it apart again and lube it in a minute. Get it on there centered into that groove of the hole and then screw it back in. So while it's apart, of course, you're going to take the O-rings off, clean everything up, and um, re-lube them with some O2 compatible lube, like this, and it's back together. You can see uh, the DSV is open, and the groove lines up with this hole so that you can vent the valve or vent the water out, I should say, um, when uh, when you go to um, use it underwater. So that's, that's how simple it is. That's it, that's the whole thing. And then the plunger, so you have this fitting here that, that screws into the head, and then you've got the adapter so that you can connect a regular a standard regulator hose, second stage hose. You gotta pop this off. So once that breaks loose, I can just use this wrench, turn that out. So again, that's an adapter fitting that comes standard on the Sidewinder. It's got an O-ring on there, check that. That one should probably be replaced. And then the valve is not going to come out. So I'm going to have to take this cover off. But you see the plunger there. That's the plunger. Maybe I can work it out. No, that's all right. Let me grab another tool and I'll get it out of there. All right, got my drill here. Uh, this is a 532nds, a four millimeter will also work. Uh, be careful when using power tools on this stuff. Again, you don't want to strip anything out, but for the sake of speeding this up, I'm gonna use this to take it apart. Sorry for the noise. All right. 
So that's your cover. That's it. This is the diaphragm. Lines up with the holes there. It has this um, plastic piece on here that's the activation button. It's just a screw that goes through the plunger into the cap and that's what holds it together. When there's pressure on here, this the stem will stick upwards, or I'm sorry, it'll point straight out. And then when you push down on this diaphragm, it will break the seal loose between this surface and the inside of this fitting. So that is a good working valve stem. I don't know if you can tell, but this surface is smooth all the way around with no deformities or no issues. Same thing with this area around the valve stem versus the one that I had to replace. This one, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a huge groove in here and the surface in this area is, is deformed pretty well. I don't think you can probably see that in the video, but uh, I will post some better quality photos so you can see that. I kept it just because I like keeping stuff. And then this is the old diaphragm that I replaced. There's nothing wrong with it. I kept it as a, a spare to the spare, um, but, um, that's that's pretty much it. This thing's kind of dirty. I didn't realize that uh, it was that dirty in there. I'll get that cleaned up and put it back together. It's just as easy enough to put that back in, get the holes back on, get the holes lined up, and lock that back down. For this, I will do it by hand because you don't want to strip anything out. I'll take it back apart again in a little bit. Let's clean that inside out. But that's really it. You don't want to go much further than that. They're already touching bottom and then I would just give it, you know, a little bit to snug them up. That's all you need. No need to do anything more than that. Like I said, not much to them. Um, the simplicity of this thing makes it, in my opinion, uh, very, or I should say less susceptible to having problems. I, I, I really do like the simplicity of how this thing works. Hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and I will either make another video or answer them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention is the mushroom valves. They are also very simple to maintain on this thing, uh, but really quick, this is the O-ring that was on this line right here, I went ahead and replaced it. I didn't like it. It looks a little deformed and starting to come apart in the middle there. But anyway, replace that. So these, these are mushroom valves. They have an O-ring. You clean those up, lube them. Use, uh, again, the, the brass picks work great for taking these off. Uh, again, don't dig in too hard because you can mar up the plastic. Um, these are still the originals. Simple to inspect. Make sure there's no cuts, tears, any deformities. Make sure that it, it's sitting, it's riding on that flat surface right there uh, correctly so that it makes a good seal. And then obviously you have to determine which direction your loop is flowing. In this case, it's going from left to right in my DSV here. So this one is going to go in like this. And it just pushes straight in. This one is going to go the other direction so that 
gas can flow that way and you just slide them right in. They're very easy to take out. I usually just grab a pair of needle nose without pushing or pinching the the silicone valve here they come right out if you do try to breathe through here while these are like that without the hoses on there they're just going to blow out um, so another easy way to at least push this one out this one i just push back pull back here grab that with the needle nose and again they slide right out again hope that helps any questions anything i missed let me know. Have a good one. See you on the next one.